So when I want to buy a washer dryer, I look at a base. What do I need it to do? I need it to wash my clothes. I don't need it to sing me a song. I don't need it to read me a book. I don't need to ding at me. I need it to wash the clothes. I don't need it in teal and I don't need it in RIA blue. I want a washer dryer. I figured you'd have been avocado green. No. Well, I loved that as a kid, but that was a basic color. My grandparents had green appliance. A little nostalgic there. Yeah, Brady Bunch. They all had green. Harvest Gold. Harvest Gold. But those weren't premium colors. You didn't pay more for those. The Real Investment Show. And we're back. Um, interesting study. This financial planner spent five years studying 233 millionaires to learn about their habits and the way they think. And we talk about what we call the super savers and one of our favorite favorite books, Millionaire Next Door. So the um, millionaires that he interviewed, all different backgrounds, uh, $160,000 in annual gross income, $3.2 million in net assets. So he, he wanted to see of like, what did they spend their money on? And where did they stop wasting money? What were things that they didn't do? And here's some interesting stuff, Danny. One was they avoided buying processed and packaged foods. So they stopped buying low-quality processed food and instead opted for organic or wholesome foods that did not have preservatives, farmers markets, uh, grocery stores that were known for high-quality products. In other words, health equal wealth for this group was an investment. Like when I grew up, I was most like, if you will rip me open right now, I'm probably mostly Twinkies and Ding Dongs, okay? We didn't have money. So the processed foods, you know, even my girlfriend goes, everything you have to eat in a plastic package? Like, no, I don't do that anymore, but that's how I grew up it's because it was cheaper. But the, it, it's, you know, we talk about this health versus wealth connection. So I thought that was pretty fascinating, Danny, how... They want to be healthier and will go ahead and not waste their money on processed foods. And now people will argue with me, well, don't you understand that that's pretty much what we can afford? And I just said that myself. But I even think if you don't have the means of someone that's making $160,000, you can still make better choices. And I think there's um, a lot of there's there's a lot to this, right? Because there is a lot of waste, and when you go to the store and you you buy too much. I mean, we see that within our own household, but we do primarily eat, um, you know, non-processed foods. Where you're having to cook, kids come over to the house and they're not real happy with the selection of snacks that we have at the Ratliff household. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's it's oh, honestly gosh. right. And the kids are like, "Hey, do you want to try one of these?" And I'm like, "No, stop doing that." James is sucking on a lemon. Like, hey, you want some? That. No, no, it's not that bad. But no, but you'd make it smart, you know. Well, and, and, and it's good. And there's ways it's I good. know that we could even do better with this because, you know, we're on the run. We've got three kids. We're constantly, you know, we're trying to cook, plan ahead. But we've noticed that if we will actually be more deliberate about it and you know, one meal plan or you only go when you buy, you know, each day or every other day. And that way you don't have much waste. You're using everything that you have on hand. It doesn't give you a whole lot of options. So you say, hey, today I want meatballs, but you know what? We're going to go ahead and do this instead. And then something else that you needed for that is gets old. So there's ways that you can do this very, like I said, it's, it's got to be deliberate. It does. But it saves money in the long run, we find. And yeah. we don't eat out much, but when we do, you know, we share meals. People think we're, we're broke. I mean, but. Fred's going to chime in about well, the I, Mexican food he's eating. Oh, no, no. I was going to mention Keith Klein always likes to say, make uh, better bad choices. That, yeah. that's. You know, which yeah. it's, it's a mindset. It is. It is. Um, and I always look at it as if I eat poorly, it's going to cost me more in the long run. Um, and I'm like, the quality of your retirement's not going to be this. So I thought that that was good. They also refuse to drop money on cheaply made goods. They don't buy the latest fashion trends or inexpensive or poorly constructed furniture, right? So they looked at more timeless pieces, less of these investments, right? So, so yes, the cost was higher, but they were comfortable making those purchases, but they also know 
they don't have to purchase them again. Like if you buy furniture that's poorly constructed, you're probably going to have to replace that furniture every few years. And they would rather upfront say, well, spend a little bit more. And I always think there's a mid road for that, don't you? Like I don't want the highest, I don't need the highest, most expensive, and I don't want the cheapest. But if I go search somewhere in the middle, um, I'm, I'm okay with that. But there are pieces that they own from this, from this uh, survey that they say, listen, we, we don't have to replace it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. we shopped the scratch and dent. Like, hey, this has a scratch on it. Because oh, I know my kids are going to beat something up. I mean, that's just And go ahead and I dare here. you, when you go find a washer, dryer, or scratch, which I will always do too, go ahead and find the scratch or the dent. I dare you. It, you got to really look hard. Because when I want to buy a washer dryer, I look at a basic, what do I need it to do? I need it to wash my clothes. I don't need it to sing me a song. I don't need it to read me a book. I don't need to ding at me. I need it to wash the clothes. I don't need it in teal and I don't need it in RIA blue. I want a washer dryer. I figured you'd have been avocado green. No. Well, I loved that as a kid. But that was a basic color. My grandparents had green appliance. A little nostalgic there. Yeah, Brady Bunch. They all had green. Harvest gold. Harvest gold. But those weren't premium colors. You didn't pay more for those. Now it's like, oh, yeah. you want fuchsia? You want a fuchsia washer dryer? It's ridiculous. Last time we bought a washing machine, we, we asked the salesman, which is the one that lasts the longest? And he said, get you a hot point. Because that's what and, the and steamships a, put on board. Oh. Because they, you know, if it breaks out in the middle of the ocean, you can't repair it. I also know the Speed Queen. And when I was a kid, mm -hmm. when I was like 11 years old, I used to help my mother in a flop house called the Terminal Hotel in Coney <laughs> Island to wash the sheets. And I'm still queasy right now. And all the washeterias, all the laundromats had Speed Queens. Yes. And now I notice Speed Queen makes a washer. So in other words, they're looking at dependability. In that vein, they're, to, they're saying that they prefer to spend money uh, on completely replacing things like old roofs, washing machines, dishwashers, refrigerators, rather than putting the money toward expensive repairs. You know, here's the thing that always, that is a conundrum for me, Danny. Maybe you can shed some light these American Home Shield and all these warranties. And then I read stories about the, the, the people that come out and service these things. So people will pay to, for a month to insure their appliances. And then all I see are, well, they send out this group of people that have no idea what they're doing. In other words, to me, is that even worth it to warranty do something like an American Home Shield. I think it's nice when you're getting a new home, right? And they're, a lot of times they're giving that to you as oh, you purchase the house. On new appliances, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I've never had a good experience with something like that. I have that. just not had good experiences with you, Brent? No. I just, just don't see it worth the money. No. Well, it's no. like you said. I mean, they, they come out because the ice maker is broken, and then they come back out. They have the wrong part. And, the, you know, what? oh, we're going to be here between 12 and 6, and, you know. And, they'll, and they notice they'll patch it up. Like, they yeah. don't, like mm -hmm. it might need to be replaced, but they're going to do everything before that, which is going to cause you more frustration, as well, opposed to maybe taking that money and putting it in a money market every yeah. month and just building it up in an emergency fund. Well, time is money, right? And there, there, I'm sure there's many instances where it's been very well worth it. But, especially if something large breaks down, yeah, I have a hard time with it. Yeah, I just don't see the value in it. Um, but, and they don't either. And you so, like insuring everything. I do, and this is where I don't get it. Um, okay. So here's another thing. Outdoor tools and equipment. They say they do enjoy outdoor work, but for the most part, they're hiring landscapers to take care of all their outdoor upkeep. They didn't want to, in other words, they're buying their time. They look at what their time is worth. Now, I know people who work and cut their lawns, and they do have a lot of money, but they, it's therapy for them. You know, yeah. it's more of a something that they like to do. And I get that. But the, the mentality is here is if I could spend my time doing something more productive and hire a landscaper, I will do that. And this is a contentious debate uh -oh. in our household. Uh -oh. Very much so. She wants to mow the yard to do everything. And I, I just, I, I don't dislike doing it, I, but I don't have the time for it. Well, and that's it. Yeah. If, like if, you said, what's your time worth? Yeah. yeah. I do the yard. 
it takes at least a half day, maybe three quarters, mm -hmm. because of the way I do it. I haven't got that time, that kind of time anymore. Yeah. I, I'm and either so, we're, I'm either here or I'm with the kids. Yeah. I mean, bottom line. So a crew comes in once a week and does it in 30 minutes. Right. Done. And they're gone. And they're they gone. They get it done yeah. and they're yeah. gone. And I personally, sometimes I will mow the lawn just because I want to get, I want to think about some stuff and yeah. I will go ahead yeah. and do it. But for the most part, they're saying, what's my time worth? And I would rather hire somebody to do certain things versus what my, my time and doing other things that are more productive. So. Last one is lottery tickets. So they don't like lottery tickets, right? They don't want to spend money on lottery tickets and encourage their friends to do the same. Because, of course, any winnering of a lottery is slim. I disagree with this. I know why you like it. You like it for the dreams and the thoughts and the I creativity like the aspect of yeah, it. Yeah, and I don't buy them often. I don't, but I like the idea of a scratch. I think there's something about buying that scratch off ticket. And like you said, the endorphins of scratching through that and figuring out if I win, what will I do? He's thinking about buying an island to create a tiny home nation. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we already I know mean, where for Rich the five bucks that I spent, I got more entertainment. Well, you're easily amused. I, I am. I'm very easily amused. But for most people... It also keeps people, Amy busy on road trips. Well, there's She's that. She's scratching with the quarters. And it's, the it's a stupid tax on the mathematically challenged. I, yeah, absolutely. I mean, as far as what they're saying in the spirit of the study, yeah, lottery tickets are an absolute waste of money. But I'm like, <laughs> sometimes you just want to scratch something. You take your machete and you start scratching that ticket. Thinking it's your ex's head? <laughs> I'm kidding. Of course, I'm joking. That's a joke. Lighten up, everybody. The weekend's here. Well, we so appreciate you being with us today. Lance back on Monday. Hope you all have a good weekend. Go take a look at Lance's newsletter. Sign up. RIA Advisors, realinvestmentadvice.com. Take care. <laughs>